even in this war of machines. There may come a time when you find yourself face to face and hand to hand with your enemy. At these times, a knowledge of close combat will stand you in good stead. Not only may it get you out of a nasty situation, but most important of all, it may help you to defeat the enemy. First of all, there's no such thing as defense in close combat. It's attack or counterattack all the time. Secondly, don't be afraid of his weapons. Even if you have none yourself, you are not unarmed. You've got your hands and you've got your boots. Oh yes, I know it sounds all very well to talk about arms and legs against rifles and bayonets, but if you know how to use it, like Reed and Jackson did, you still have a very good chance of doing him down. Now, Reed and Jackson are here today to show you a few more tricks of the trade. And speaking of tricks, here's the most important point of all. Remember, war is not a game, and there are no rules. The Hun has been trained and taught to blot you out with any and every dirty trick he can think of. And he's got a dirty mind. So, in close combat, anything is fair if it enables you to get the better of your enemy. Now, Jackson is going to play the Hun in spite of his good looks. <laughs> <laughs> when you come face to face with your enemy, you have to decide upon your method of attack. First, study your opponent. See how he's dressed, what sort of weapons he has, and in which hand he carries them. Is he right or left-handed? Does his helmet cover the back and sides of his neck? Does his coat or equipment prevent a really good kick at his fork? When you've summed him up, you'll know best how to act. Be quick about it, or he may act first. And finally, wear tricks. The Hun with his hands in the air is still dangerous. Now we come to some special blows and where to plunk. The chin jab. A vigorous upward thrust at the chin with the heel of the hand, keeping the fingers spread and slightly bent. They may take effect on either his nose or his eyes. This is much more effective than a punch with the clenched fist. Edge of hand blow, or better known to some of you as the rabbit blow. Use the outer edge of either hand, fingers fully stretched and close together. Strike at the throat, sides, or back of the neck. Now this one is called the shin stamp. Use his shin as a guide for the outer edge of your foot and stamp heavily on his instep. It's the stamp that really counts, not the shin. The knee blow is very simple and effective. Just raise your knee sharply into his fork, stomach, or face, as may be most convenient. Boxing punch, used for three spots only. The throat, pit of the stomach, or the fork. Don't use it for the chin. The chin jab is more effective. Now for the kick. Just that, and nothing more. But deadly when used in the right places. Never used at a standing opponent who is on his guard. You'll see why later. But if he is partly down, kick at fork, stomach, or face. And if he is right down, the neck or kidneys. And don't forget, you've got a heel. Helmet blow. Remember that normally you should never take your helmet off, with one exception which we'll come to later. But accidents happen, and it may fall off or get knocked off. If it does, and you can grab hold of it, you've got a very effective weapon. Hold it firmly with the fingers inside and the thumb on top of the brim and strike with the edge at the fork, throat or sides of the neck, back of the neck or kidneys. So much for the blows. Now we come to a simple homemade weapon, the kosh. A bit of wood or a bit of metal about 15 inches long and about an inch in diameter. But best of all, a bit of insulated electric cable. Make a loop and pass it through the hole in the end of the cosh. A loop large enough to slip your hand in, but not too large so that it falls off. Cosh is a grand weapon. It leaves both hands free when not actually in use and is ready immediately when required, so it requires no great force to put your hand down for the count or for keeps. And if you should happen to strike too hard, well, what a pity. You'll have to go and look for another hunt.
<laughs> Strike at the side of the neck, the throat, at the fork, or the back of the neck. That's that. Well, now for a bit of action. Reed and Jackson are going to show you how to employ the blows. First of all, how to tackle a man from behind. I expect you're wondering how it's done. Well, let's see it in slow time. Creep up silently. Fling one arm round his neck so as to bring your forearm hard into his throat. At the same time, knee him sharply in the backside or back of the legs with the opposite knee. Right arm round, left knee up. As he begins to topple, put your free hand over his mouth to keep him quiet. The moment he's down, strike with any of the blows. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> A word of caution. You can only hope to approach silently over grass, sand, or a smooth surface. You cannot expect to do it over gravel, debris, or broken ground. If you do make a noise and your opponent begins to turn, you must go on. A rug attack at the back of his knees. He's bound to go down, and you jump on him and lay him out. Now, what to do when you're attacked? You have no weapon, and the hand comes at you with a rifle and bend. Don't shoot on the papers. Don't shoot. And this is how it's done. You have got to get close. So if he will not come to you, you must go to him. You must distract his attention in some way. Fling something at his face. Anything will do, even a packet of papers or your table. It takes him off his guard for a split second. Jump in at once and parry his bayonet outwards. Never inwards, always outwards. Then go for the man. Strike with the edge of hand and follow with kicks or other blows. Now, how to deal with the man armed with a pistol? I've got my hands up. Don't shoot now. Sorry, Jack. Once again, you must get close. As soon as the pistol point is within a few inches of your tummy, keep your eye fixed on his and speak to him. Say anything. It doesn't matter what. He probably won't understand. The fact of speaking will distract his attention. The moment you are ready, Swing round and sweep the pistol hand outwards with your nearest arm. If his pistol is in his right hand, your turn must be to your right and your left arm used for the swing. Immediately you've struck the weapon clear, swing back using your other hand for chin jab and then knee blow and kick it forward. Follow with other blows as necessary. Next we come the enemy armed with a knife. And here there are three distinct possibilities. First of all, he may come at you with a knife firmly in one hand, ready for an upward thrust. As the hand comes upward in the thrust, meet it with your opposite forearm to break the blow. Follow on as before. In this case, he approaches in a crouch passing the knife from hand to hand so that you don't know which he is going to use for the thrust. This is the one time when you can remove your helmet. As he strikes, thrust the helmet onto his arm. Follow on at once. Lastly, if he is a complete novice, he may come holding the knife ready for a downward stroke. Oh. 